once upon a time somebody asked me a question that when does god protect us and when he does not <laughs> very good question so i thought uh, i could make a video on this it's a very interesting topic and we will see the lessons which we can derive from the past time of arjuna going and killing jayadrat so whoever is from india or whoever is born in a hindu family they may know a bit about mahabharat and they may know about this past time which i am telling okay so today we will discuss from that past time to know when exactly god shows the divine arrangement and till when does he not <laughs> okay so there you go if you are new to the channel and if you are not yet subscribed then subscribe somewhere here there down below and if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life you can go to my website down and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who also asks these kind of questions and yes if you have not watched this playlist on the bhagavad gita then you could please go and watch this and the shrimad bhagavatam also and i will continue making videos on these two playlists from now on again and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you <laughs> okay so what happened was the war of kurukshetra as we all know it went for many days so the first 9 days bhishma pitama was the commander in chief and then on the 9th day lord krishna became extremely angry on bhishma and he took the wheel of the chariot yes in his hand and he started charging towards bhishma and when bhishma saw this he surrendered himself he put his weapons down and then arjuna requested krishna that please don't do this <laughs> i will kill him don't worry because you have taken a vow that you will not lift a weapon in this war and yes of course uh, krishna did not lift a weapon exactly because it was not a weapon it was a wheel of the of, of a broken chariot so krishna is god he can break a vow without breaking it and still <laughs> okay so only, only he can do that of course so technically he did not break his vow but categorically he did all right so now what happened the next day as we all know uh the pandavas were instructed by bhishma pitama himself that you can bring shikhandi he did not exactly say that but he hinted he said that uh, i will not marry uh, i will not fight anybody who is not a man or you know there's a long list which he gives one who is the uh son of he one who is the only son of somebody yes and the many other criterias which he gives but he gives the hint rightly towards shikhandi who was uh, one of the three ladies who who had some uh, issues with bhishma in the past life you all know about that okay so i will not go to that now so then bhishma pitama he fell in the bed of bed of arrows because arjuna had uh, shot him and it is said that there were so many arrows in bhishma's body that you, know, you cannot put a finger inside so there's no space you know for a finger to go there are so many arrows in his body so in that case bhishma could not fight anymore and he fell down from his chariot and then next day morning duryodhana had declared that um, drona charya will be the commander in chief which is obvious because he is the senior most in the hierarchy after drona after bhishma of course and then uh, the 10th day bhishma fell and 11th day drona became the commander 11th day drona wanted to uh, now duryodhana is very intelligent not in a good way but in a demoniac way so what he did was uh, under the advice of his culprit uh, uncle yes shakuni and by the so called fake prowess of his friend karna and his so called 99 brothers headed by dushasan these four uh, the these three personalities they always used to hint duryodhana towards doing nonsense so what shakuni told was that uh, this bhishma always had emotions for pandavas which is very obvious because they are his descendants so there's nothing wrong in having emotions and so does drona 
okay so drona his favorite student is arjuna and that is why uh, he will not fight wholeheartedly okay so uh, duryodhan always used to go drona and bhishma that you know you are partial towards the pandavas yes and his uh, his uncle and his brother and his friend these three would always uh, instigate him to criticize these two great personalities drona and bhishma so then shakuni devised a plan what shakuni said was that what we will do is we will uh, not let's not kill the pandavas so let's do something very intelligent we will capture yudhishthir march and then once yudhishthir is captured because it's the law that if the king is captured the battle is over but if you kill yudhishthir then bhima will take over as the position of the king and he will fight on behalf of yudhishthir and then if yudhishthir bhima is killed then arjuna fights arjuna is killed then nakul sadevard so if you kill yudhishthir then the war doesn't stop there but if you capture yudhishthir as in hindi they say bandi bana liya then the war stops there and then they are their prisoners for the rest of eternity yes the pandavas of course so uh, then uh, duryodhan said that we will go to drona and uh, shakuni suggested him this because shakuni knew that drona may not fight wholeheartedly against the pandavas he was very intelligent also in a demoniac way so he said go and tell to drona that we will capture yudhishthir and uh, the war will be over and then drona said okay that's a very good uh, decision that you have made you know you want to stop the war duryodhana was pretending as if he wanted to stop the war you know he didn't want bloodshed and he was like no no no, no we want peace actually you know <laughs> of course all uh, his uh, nefarious activities backfired later on then drona said okay so tomorrow what i will do i will capture yudhishthir and i will hand him over to you and because drona is disciple of you know parshuram and he is like invincible no no warrior in the entire world can fight with him it, it is not possible to defeat drona sir it is just not possible so everybody knew that when drona has said that i will do it it means that he is actually doing it okay so there was no question of will drona be able to do it or not it was like he has said it so it's done tomorrow the war is getting over why is this getting blurred ah oh, i don't know why anyway so then uh the next day 11th day of the kurukshetra war they said that okay we will capture this so the war started and drona was heading uh, very aggressively towards yudhishthir and he defeated nakul sadev bhima he defeated satyaki he defeated so many other personalities on the side of the pandavas but then he reached yudhishthir and he also defeated yudhishthir and he was about to capture yudhishthir but arjuna came there and arjuna is sabhya sachi i mean nobody can defeat him so arjuna resisted not only he resisted uh, the attack of drona but he also bested drona which means he overpowered him and he drona was literally he ran away from there i mean not exactly but they were fighting 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 and then drona understood that i cannot defeat arjuna now so he retracted from there then next day the same thing happened this is the 12th day morning the same thing happens he again defeats bhima yudhishthir nakul sadev and at the end arjuna comes all right and they stop <laughs> and arjuna stops drona from capturing yudhishthir so next day drona tells duryodhana that although arjuna is my own uh, he is my own disciple but i cannot defeat him it's not possible and also krishna is also there so nobody can defeat this combo of krishna and arjuna so the only way by which you can capture yudhishthir is you have to take arjuna away from the battlefield and then we know that uh, susharma was one of the kings uh, who was fighting on the side of the kurus and then susharma was uh, you know duryodhana very tactfully managed susharma and he said that you go and challenge arjuna tomorrow on the 13th day and 
tell him that uh, if you have the courage then fight with me and then Arjuna will follow your code because he is a Kshatriya and a Kshatriya cannot uh, generally does not or he is not supposed to deny any challenge which is offered to him and that's what happened uh, then they then Susharma went to Arjuna and said that we want to fight alone where there is no disturbance so let's go towards the end of Kurukshetra the battlefield and we'll fight there and then he took Arjuna there of course Krishna warned him that you should not go now your duty is not to reply to this Susharma it, your duty is to protect your history but then Arjuna he said to Krishna that no worries Bhima is there you know Nakul Sadev is there Satyak is there he is there he is there he is there <laughs> They will uh, protect Yudhishthira Maharaj and Yudhishthira himself is there. And then Arjuna goes away from the Kurukshetra battlefield from that area and he goes to the end. And of course later on he fights uh, uh, very vigorously with Susharma and then Susharma is also killed. Hopefully I guess yes. And then when Arjuna is away then Dronacharya declares Chakraviyu. Chakravyu is a special formation in the army uh, which nobody knew how to get through. So it is very difficult to get inside the Chakravyu and it's very difficult to get outside of it. So in the entire battlefield there were very selected personalities who knew. So one was of course Arjuna, then Krishna knew then Bhishma, then Drona and there was another personality who knew it. Abhiman knew. He was the son of Arjuna of course. So Abhiman knew. So that, that time what happened? They declared Chakravyu and Chakravyu is so so dangerous that it keeps, it's like a circle you know, reverse, reverse spiral. There's one circle which goes like this and the other circle goes on the opposite side. So it like keeps going like this like this and it keep, keeps expanding and it devours the entire army. Okay. It's very dangerous. If you do not know how to counter it then you are finished. You are dead. Nobody can save you. So then they declared that we are arranging chakra view and then Yudhishthir Maharaj he was like my god nobody is there in our army. Who knows how to break this. Because Krishna and Arjun is not there now. But then Abhimanyu came and said when I was in the womb of my mother, Subhadra, then Arjuna, my father, was narrating how to get inside of this chakra view, how to break this and fight the army inside. And the only problem is I do not know how to return back from it because when he was speaking of returning back, then my mother, Subhadra, she fell asleep. So I was in her room and because she didn't hear, I also could not hear. But I know how to go inside. Then Yudhishthira Maharaj thought that okay no problem you break the chakra view then we will also go behind okay and then we will protect you there you fight and we will uh, be there to back you but then what happened uh, this Jayadarath came and Jayadarath stopped and I will not go into that detail Jayadarath had a boon from Lord Shiva that he will be able to defeat all the Pandavas except Arjuna one day in his lifetime and that was the day he chose to take that benediction from Lord Shiva and then of course Abhimanyu was brutally killed by seven Maharathis together yes we all know that Drona was there Dushasan was there Karana was there Duryodhan was there Shalya was there Ashwatthama was there Kritabarma was there these seven Maharathis they brutally mercilessly they killed this 16 year old boy you know? they all attacked together it is said okay and there, there's a lot of description and uh, ultimately Abhimanyu was killed by the son of Dushasan yes and his chariot was broken and his uh, bow was broken Karna broke the bow then his chariot was also broken so it was like the most gruesome act that could have ever occurred and that too uh, in a place where there are personalities like Drona but Anyways, uh, when Drona and Bhishma were there, uh, Draupadi was also insulted. So, there's not much uh, to the surprise, yes, that this thing happened because millions of times worse than this 
the insult of Draupadi which had happened in the Asad Sabha long back when Bhishma was also there that time. Okay, so then Arjuna became very angry and then he took a vow when he came back that tomorrow either I will uh, submit myself to fire or uh, Jadarath will be killed. So that means if he cannot kill Jadarath, he has to go into fire. He has to immolate himself. So then Krishna was horrified when Arjuna made this promise because Jadarath's father had given him a boon that whoever cuts your head and throws it, no, sorry, whoever throws your head to the ground, his own head will crack into thousand pieces. So then what happened was, so now if Arjuna kills him, and then Jadara's head will fall down, then his head will blast, Arjuna's own head. And if he does not do that, then Arjuna has to go and submit himself to the fire and that to before the sunset, Suryast. So then when Arjuna took this vow, the entire Kauravas, they came to know about this. And then Drona, Dronacharya next day, 11, 12, 13 day Abhiman you died, 14th day this happened. Okay, and on 15th day Drona died. So 14th day, uh, Drona made special provisions so that Jadrath is placed at the highest zone of security. He is highly secure and to reach Jadrath, you have to cross over the army of 11 miles. Yes, 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 I am talking 11 miles. Not a joke. 11 mile long army na, just for the protection of Jadarath. It is almost next to impossible that even Arjuna, a person of the caliber of Arjuna can uh, reach there. It is next to impossible. But Arjuna did everything. And that day the attack of these three combined, Satyaki, Bhima and Arjuna, it was so, it was so devastating because the Pandavas were completely devastated at this at this uh, ghastly act which the Kauravas had committed by killing Abhimanyu like this, you know, by surrounding himself, by surrounding him from all sides. So the Pandavas decided that we will not spare the Kauravas this time. And then Arjuna, uh, he fought, fought, fought and then Donachari came to counter him and then Krishna told Arjuna that if you keep fighting with him, the sun will set. Nobody can defeat Donachari. Forget him. Leave him aside and go ahead. And then uh, Bhima and Satyaki, these two were also there. And their attack was also so devastating that day. Uh, the Kauravas were literally shivering. They were like, oh my God, it seems Bhima and Satyaki are going to extinguish the <laughs> Kauravas from today's battlefield. <laughs> Nobody is able to resist them. Nobody is able to check them, these two. And forget what Arjuna is doing. You ignore what Arjuna is doing. Now, Arjuna is like, he, he was like Yamaraj that day. Whoever is coming in his way, you know, Duryodhan comes, Dushasan comes, Karna comes, Shalya comes, Shakuni comes. He is just finishing one by one. And he's just going ahead in the army. And Arjuna did everything. And at the end, when he reached the main... Uh, the main viewer, viewer is the formation where Jadarath was kept securely. That is the time when Arjuna started fighting. And at that time, what happened? The the, the view, I will not go into details of that formation, but uh, the, the formation was arranged in such a way, intelligently by Dona, that when one Maharathi, Maharathi means these big, big personalities, these uh, famous personalities, uh, like uh, Duryodhan, Dushasan, Karna and all these. So the, the view was arranged in such a way that suppose one Marathi fights with Arjuna and he gets injured, then he will go to the back. Then a new Marathi will come and fight with him. Then again he goes to the back and then again a new Marathi comes. So then it's like a circle, you see. So you are, you are fighting, you lose, you are injured, you go back, you stabilize yourself, then you come again. And again you fight with Arjuna. And at the end what was happening is, all the Marathis, they were attacking Arjuna together. So, uh, this was like, this was this was unbearable that you were attacking together. You know, just like they were attacking Abhimanyu, they were also attacking Arjuna together. So, then Arjuna, 
he was fighting alone nobody was there to help him and it appeared as if a rain cloud of arrows were coming from the side of the kurus yes because all the marathis were attacking together imagine all the the most powerful warriors of this planet they are attacking you together just imagine what could be applied so arjuna did everything what he could do uh, in his command but it was not possible for him or anybody to fight with all these marathis together because that's humanly impossible so then the sun was also setting down and there was the sunset was around the corner and that time krishna realized that arjuna has done enough what not he has done and before he reached the uh, view there was a time when duryodhana was attacking arjuna before this was on that same day itself in the mid 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 part of the day afternoon and all when duryodhana was attacking arjuna when arjuna's horses yes the chariot has horses the horses were resting that time and arjuna and krishna were down so that time he uh, duryodhana attacked uh, arjuna again and then arjuna although he was not in the chariot he was still fighting with uh, duryodhana and then duryodhana was defeated and he ran away so that time krishna thought that my my devotee arjuna he has done everything whatever he could and now what challenge he is facing is almost impossible for him to achieve if one and one fight is going on then nobody can defeat arjuna but imagine all these great warriors are fighting then it is not possible of course arjuna had defeated the entire kuru army in virat when he was fighting yes even even bhishma was there that time can you imagine how powerful he is but that day the attack was so furious that and also of course but arjuna was also attacking furiously but it somehow appeared that the sun is going to set very soon and krishna realized that enough is enough now i have to step in and i have to give divine intervention <laughs> now is the time that i have to protect my devotee because krishna just some days back he spoke the gita and there he said yoga kshemam bahamyam which means he said that whatever my devotees possess i preserve it and whatever they lack i provide it so that time what krishna did was he he did something amazing <laughs> so he started putting the clouds over the setting sun the sun had almost set it is said and it was totally cloudy and then duryodhana and others they thought the sun has set and that's what happened when they saw that the sun has set or when they thought that the sun has set then jayadrath was so happy he was like oh yes 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 you fool arjuna you thought that you will defeat me oh you are such a loser you can't do anything look and you call this person krishna god look what god has done to you he is such a useless hopeless and a powerless god he is totally useless people say he is god no now it's proved you see if god is there with you how can you lose <laughs> and then jayadrath came out of the formation of the view and then he was mocking arjuna there and arjuna was ab about to invoke agni fire and he was about to submit himself to fire hmm? but that time krishna he removed the clouds from the sun and some versions of the mahabharat also said that he covered the sun with his sudarshan chakra okay so either ways then suddenly the sun appeared from the sky the last rays of the sun they were falling on the battle of kurukshetra the field of kurukshetra 
So then Krishna suddenly told him, My dear Arjuna, it's not sunset yet. <laughs> that there's the sun and here is Jadrat. Yes, these are the exact words which are there in the Mahabharata. And then what Arjuna did was he invoked a Brahmastra and he combined it with the weapon of Indra, the Vajra. These two weapons he combined and with that he discharged towards Jadrat. And when he discharged this weapon, then Jadrat's head was chopped off immediately and it went and the head, because the the condition was that whoever puts the head to the ground, his own head will blast. So, Jadra's father had given him this boon. So, Krishna had told Arjuna before that when you shoot, make sure the head does not fall in the ground. It goes and falls in the lap of his own father. So, then his father was doing penance in the Himalayas. And then this weapon took his head to his father. And then his father's lap he was sitting and meditating suddenly he saw that there's something and suddenly when he saw he saw that it's my own son and he was like horrified he just did like this he forgot that he only had given him this boon you know and then his father's head cracked into thousand pieces and arjuna emerged victorious okay so that's the lesson god will help us definitely but before his help comes before the divine intervention comes we have to give our 100 percent yes arjuna had done everything anything and everything he could in fact uh, the chariot which he had was not ordinary it was a it was having uh, the divine horses celestial steeds they were tired that day can you believe it arjuna had fought so much they, the horses had pulled the chariot so much that they were tired. They are divine horses. They are not from this Bhuloka. They are from the higher planetary realms. They surrendered that day. And Arjuna had to create a illusory kind of, you know, Switzerland there. And in that Switzerland, he went and there were mountains, there were rivers. Yes, this is all the illusion inside the Kurukshetra war. And these horses, they were resting and they were drinking water and they were having food. And after that, Arjuna brought them out from this illusion which he had created within the Kurukshetra battlefield. Can you believe it? They surrendered. So that means how much Arjuna would have exerted himself fully. And then the news reached the Pandava camp and it also reached the Kauravas that Jayadrath is dead and Arjuna still lives. Okay. So that's the lesson that when we give our not 100, 1000 percent, only then God will do whatever is required, which we cannot do, which he thinks is good or bad from his side, that he will do. But before that, you have to give 100 percent. Okay. So, there you go. This is what I wanted to share. And if you are new to the channel, then you could subscribe if you wish down below. And if you want a consultation for me, then please go to my website. You will find the link down in the description section of my videos here okay and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share with somebody who wants to know when god helps you and when he doesn't all right god is there with you all the time and just look to him and you will find him and he will help you okay until next time bye bye see you